It's been a while now since I've actually made a tier list video here on the channel, but whenever I do, you guys seem to love them. So seeing as the Los Santos Tuna's DLC is a fairly relevant topic still three months on, I thought what better way than to rank all of the contracts in this DLC from best to worst. Now I have actually made separate guides to each of the contracts on my channel, but today, Specifically, we will be looking at the pros and cons to each of the contracts, not in terms of the money they actually will make you. First off, we're going to be talking about the data contract. For me personally, the data contract just felt slow and sluggish throughout. Not only did the finale have two separate parts to it, which for the most part were, eh, I mean, the first part of the finale were you go into the bunker, like yes, we have seen this before and the bunker isn't anything new to us, and then going through to four separate parts of the bunker just to collect the drives and whatnot, I thought it would end there but no we had to drive all the way across the map down to the docks and then it was just kind of where i lost touch really it got really annoying for the most part just sitting there and waiting for what seemed to be an eternity which with endless waves of some somewhat op enemies until he actually finished downloading the drives yeah it just didn't feel all that fun for me really so i have to put it in the worst spot for those reasons now we have agency deal this one for me has to go in terrible. Now, reason being is because the first setup as a whole wasn't bad, it just felt boring in my opinion. And the finale, well, it was just familiar faces meeting again in a bad way. It had huge Doomsday Heist vibes, and even the AI reminded me of the Doomsday AI. Like, don't get me wrong, the cutscenes in between were pretty funny, they, they did get a laugh out of some of us, but the finale itself, meh, I, I really just wasn't feeling it. I mean, it wasn't all that difficult, but it was just a copy and paste to Act 1 of the Doomsday, and, well, if I ever feel in the mood for some little Doomsday heisting without having to waste two hours of my life on setups, I'll go for this contract, but other than that, it stays in terrible. Now, we have Prison Break. This contract, for me, is sitting its place in average. The whole contract was, for me, awesome. I did genuinely enjoy this. It gave huge Fast and Furious vibes throughout. I mean, jumping into a prison via a ramp, like... Who doesn't love that? But again, we have had the prison contract before with the prison break heist, which by the way, this contract pays more than that heist itself, which is kind of funny. And rightfully so, it's a lot better than it. You jump over a high security prison, you kill the target, you capture your friend and free him. It was a very enjoyable finale and pretty action packed as well. And the setups overall had a great theme to each one, especially the first one, somewhat setting up a story to how we get him inside of the prison, etc. However, the long paced driving path in between were a little bit meh this contract is definitely staying an average for me next up we have super dollar deal this contract is going to sit in its spot in terrible for me this contract lacked well everything really I mean, the first prep was sort of, you just invade a military base, which was kind of more action-packed than the actual finale. But, as for the finale, there is much better ones out there for sure, because it just felt a little bit too basic for me. And without an oppressor on this finale, the use of only being able to have five sticky bombs made it just that extra little bit annoying for those players who were trying to stop the MOC. And, well, we get in into it, and what, two guards? And that's it and yeah it just didn't feel complete for me next up for the bank contract i'm going to put this in good now again it's kind of the same theme for each one but the reason i haven't put this in best is because we have seen it done before with felica job and especially having the same location of one of the banks as felica job yeah that's my main critique however in general I love the vibe of this contract, we have a small window between each bank to steal the money and then dip and it really felt like the good old GTA routes. Banks, cash, police, it was just great. There was definitely room for solo players to have their own freedom and then go to each bank however they liked. And well, the setups weren't all that interesting to me, especially the jammer mission being practically useless, but anyway. Yes, the finale was an overall enjoyable, good old Grand Theft Auto style bank robbery. Now, the ECU job. This one is undoubtedly in the best spot. I mean, I had to. First off, this mission rubs even more salt into Red Dead Redemption 2 players' wounds. A GT Online got a train heist before them. Yeah, sucks. But other than that negative side of things, this contract was amazing. It was totally original, something we had never seen done before, which made it insanely enjoyable to play. And yet again, it gave me huge Fast and Furious vibes, having to stop a fully secured train to steal an ECU plate. It was awesome. There was definitely a lot of Fast and Furious hints and ideas thrown in these contracts. But this one reminded me the most of Fast and Furious. The setups too, the way we had to disguise ourselves to steal a plan of the train route and then scout out the train, it just felt 
more planned ahead for the actual contract and I just really loved it. Yeah, it was great. Okay, next up we have the lost contract. This one I'm going to go ahead and chuck in average. Now, don't get me wrong, this contract was overall an amazing contract. But however, it just felt somewhat repetitive in a way. And especially for most players doing these solo, which I'm pretty sure everyone did. It just didn't give the freedom for those players. It kind of felt a bit more difficult for those trying to tackle it as a solo player. However, the repetitive side of things where you had to go out to four separate meth labs and then go out to there and destroy each one. And then having those goddamn OP AI outside of each one and then having to kill them all off and get inside and blow it all up, etc. And then yet again having to still go to another camp just to get the oil rig and then drive to the final spot. Yes, it was a bit repetitive. Yes, it can be a bit annoying for solo players, but the good thing about this, in my opinion, was one of the setups, allowing you to actually use one of your own personal vehicles that linked with the actual finale of the contract. And that is the Phantom Wedge. Being able to actually use it and attach it to the oil rig definitely gave you that freedom and that was definitely a nice little touch added. But for the lost contract, I don't know, there was just something about it that I wasn't feeling it too much but I'm definitely going to keep it in average. And finally, for the Union Depository contract, I'm going to put this in good. Yes, we finally got our own Union Depository heist in the game. Well, the closest thing that we'll ever get to the Union Depository heist. But in general, this finale was... It was awesome. Like, don't get me wrong, we've already seen it in story modes somewhat. The same layout, the same style, the same, well, plan really, where we go in to that bank and we steal the gold. But it was just, it was an awesome touch. I really enjoyed the contract. And it just felt more jam-packed and action-packed in a way. Except for the f setups. The one where we had to go out with the police helicopter and use the scanners, etc. Yeah, that's a cool addition and all. But there's one thing that I don't like about GTA, and that's tailing missions. And this was just a full-blown tailing mission, and it was a bit boring, let's be real here. But other than that, the finale itself, it was a great touch. Coming into the bank disguised, then getting the gold, and then running out again, and mowing down all the police. Definitely, definitely a huge Union Depository contract from the story mode. Same vibe, same somewhat, same build to it. It was, it was an amazing contract in general, but I'm going to put it in good, because it did have its downsides to it. So you can't really make it to the best spot in my opinion. Anyway guys, there we have it. Let me know what you guys think of my list down below. Do you guys have a completely different list? You probably do, let's be real here. So put yours in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you let me know why you put it in that spot. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe with the bell and like the video. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you all in my next video.